What's up? This is Vince Carter. You're listening to the Three Point Conversion. Check it out. Yeah, we'll go ahead and fire away, uh, Je- uh, excuse me, uh, Percy. Start us out. We'll go to Jeff Brown. Mm-hmm. Awesome, guys. Uh, I guess it's uh, for either NECA or for Jewel. Um, you know, as a team, um, it seemed as if your physicality and your poise were like the defining traits for this game. Just how did you guys use your physicality and poise to like seemingly wear down Indiana? I mean, we wanted to come out, we wanted to dictate the tempo of the game, the energy of the game. Um, So, you know, this is a team that is in, um, I guess like a reformation mode. And so everybody is playing with a lot of energy and, um, you know, as if, you know, that, you know, this is, they have, they have so much to lose because they want to come out here and do well, you know, and to be not saying that they have so much news, but they're playing as if they do, you know, because the energy and the atmosphere in this place, I mean, (laughs) it's a lot. You can tell that they're playing for the city and they're playing for the crowd. And so we wanted to make sure that we could match, we could match their home court energy. And then I guess for like Jewel, um, you, you guys were at 47-41 at halftime, big third quarter, 34-18, uh, went up uh, what, 81 to 59 uh, in the fourth. The, the, the things that went right in that third quarter were what? Um, a lot of it was composure. Uh, some of it was us being able to get stops. We got a lot of deflections, some quick runouts uh, to kind of get our offense running. And because we were able to get so many d- defensive stops, we were able to just flow in and that's when plays and that's when we ran our best is able to just push, set a drag screen and score. Um, but we were also executing what we were trying to do on offense as well. Um, we understood their defensive schemes um, and kind of baited certain things and got what we wanted. So we were very patient on both ends of four, but we kind of was locked in defensively and we're able to really use that to get us going on offense. There you go. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. All right, thanks for seeing Jeff Brown, and then we'll go to Mazvita. Yeah, first for NECA. Um, so you guys finished the month of May with a five and three record and four straight wins. Kind of, uh, what have you learned about the team uh, so far in this first month? Uh, I learned that we're tough. You know, I've learned that um, we're kind of coming together in a cohesive way, but in a way that you know gives each other the confidence that we need to come out here and. Uh, stick to the game plan, face the opponent that's, you know, directly in front of us. Um, and it feels really good to to have all of that manifest into, as you can see, like just such a widespread on the score sheet tonight. I think that's something that's through this kind of like win streak or through these last few games, that's something that we're seeing. There's a lot of consistency from many people and we want to continue to build off of that. And for Joel, uh, you and Skyler combined for 40 points, uh, 15 assists, and 57% shooting. Uh, what did you see out of Skyler? And either if you want to evaluate your performance or if NECA wants to evaluate your performance. Um, honestly, we were just trying to get in the paint. I think, you know, we both have a, a knack for getting to the paint and creating off that, um, slowing down a little bit and got got a rhythm early. I think when we both kind of get to the, the rim early, kind of open those like jump shots and our threes and things like that. But uh, we were just playing a little more po- poise and pace mm-hmm. uh, to our things and uh, be able to just use, you know, great screeners and our spacing was really good tonight, too. I think that's a big factor for us is getting to know each other and knowing where to be for each other. And our spacing was allowed us to kind of pick apart the defense when we needed to and uh, create some shots and make some plays. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. We'll go to Masvita and then Christian. Thanks. Hey, um, just starting out with NECA, I guess I'll start with you. You you were alluding to the fact that there are a lot of people scoring, you know, a lot of diversity in that. But if I flip the script that talks, you had 29 assists. So that talks to maybe the unselfishness of the team. Can you talk about that? Yeah, that's been a point of emphasis um, from Noe. You know, she's been wanting us to move the ball more. I mean, we know that everyone can score. You know, a lot of people on our team can create shots for themselves. But I think the most efficient way for us to be able to really win games and compete is to do both, but mostly like move the body, move our bodies, move the ball and find the open person. Um, 
it's it's you know it's a part of the chemistry aspect of things and I think that um when we don't overthink stuff on offense it's it's very natural for anyone on our team to find the open person and then know that you know they have the right shot and Jill you y'all talk about how defense is important but can you just talk about the buy-in from the team defense perspective, not just individual, not the micro, but how the micro is helping with the macro and it's it's helping your offense? I mean, honestly, even from last year, um, we knew we could be a defensive team. Um, that's something that we we harped on is, you know, our defense because we looked at our roster and felt like we were able to switch a lot of things and we were athletic and you had an obviously Jordan who's like our, you know, I don't know, like Swiss Army knife, and she's so athletic and could guard one through five when needed. And so now you add another, you know, three people who want to play defense and have that anchor in that. And, uh, you know, we we understand, like, we want to play defense. Uh, that's something that I feel most teams maybe don't say. Um, but this team is like, let's we don't want to be scored on. There's a pride, individual pride, but there's also a team pride. It's like we don't want to get beat. We don't want to let someone down. And um, that just – honestly, I think that's just natural with this team. Uh, it's something that we have to really harp on is just we kind of look at each other like, all right, let's get a stop. And we're like, all right, let's do it. Um, it obviously helps when you have, you know, coming from Skylar, she's, you know, she starts in and uh, you have one person going all in, everyone else follows. And so uh, we have that. We have obviously our anchor as he, you know, clean things up. So it's like we have everyone who really wants to help each other out on defense. And that really helps us uh, throughout the games. Thank you both. Thanks, Bob. We'll go to Christian and then we'll wrap up uh, with Candace. Hey, Joel and Neca. Um, you know, on the media day, Skylar said she believed it would take five to seven games to fully adjust the team's language on the court. And then that fifth game was the first game of the team's four-game win streak right now. You know, there's been so many points throughout these last couple of games where there have been so many different runs from other teams, and the team has stayed together as far as Seattle, um, staying the pace, not really letting anything destruct the game flow. And it's really been from everybody, whether it be you, Jewel, Skyler, Ezzy. I mean, Jordan come off the bench, Mercedes um, in the post. It's really a team effort. What does it mean to you guys knowing that you're barely scratching the, uh, the surface of what this team can be? I mean, that was an, you know, that was excellent kind of um, foresight from Sky. Like, I think that I was asked that question, um, too. And I did, I couldn't really give you a timeline, but I knew that it was going to come together eventually. Um, you know, we had a really good training camp and then coming into the season real, really quickly trying to figure out how to get wins and also gel. And it's taken us a little bit of time, but I'm encouraged with the timeline in which things are coming together and also knowing that we can get wins while we're doing it. You know, we're not at all where we necessarily want to be, but we're heading in that direction. And that feels really good knowing that. And, you know, kind of going off of what Jewel was saying, like, I think everybody not only understands their role, but like embraces it and also understands each other's roles. And so we know how to um, play hard and communicate with each other and then also make put put each other in good positions when we're out there on both ends of the floor. And that commitment to win every possession on offense and defense I think it's a big reason why we're able to gel a little bit more, especially with us wanting to set the tone. Thanks, Christian. Uh, Candice and then Bella. Yep. Hey, y'all. Um, so you guys already touched on a little bit um, the importance of team defense um, and how important defense is to you guys as a unit. I was just really curious about your thoughts on Ezzy's performances specifically so far this season. Um, and just how your team defense has benefited and really flourished with her presence on the court. And I guess this is maybe more so for NECA, just how it's been getting a feel um, for working alongside her defensively this season and just the tiny things other than her shot blocking <laughs> that you've seen that have really benefited the team defense overall. Yeah, I love, I actually was just talking to Ezzy about this yesterday. I love the, um, kind of like the support that I have on the backside, you know, um, I try to do my best to know my personnel and make sure I'm in the right spots. I'm definitely kind of more of like a helper, like being aggressive on the ball, but then knowing that there's someone on the backside that has my back, um, you know, she's, she's kind of just, you know, the, the marshal of our defense, like she sees everything, she anticipates things and she's the finisher, you know, and um, I think it's something that we've always known that she can do. 
But, you know, in my first year of being here, it feels as though she's kind of assuming that role. And there's a stature that she has when she's playing on defense um, that serves as kind of like the anchor, as Jules says, and like the protector that we have down there. Um, not, not as like a bailout, but as someone that can kind of really just finish the job. And I love her attitude towards defense. You know, I know what her what she's capable of, but I think her attitude is really what um, kind of turns it up a notch. And we'll wrap up with Bella. Bella, go ahead. Thanks for the time, guys. Um, I want to ask both of you about Victoria Vivian's. Um, Noelle talked previously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> can you hear me still? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Sorry. <laughs> So it, the Zoom said it looked like I was done talking, so I was confused. Um, uh, your coach had said that she is able to really impact the game without necessarily getting a lot of touches or taking a lot of shots, maybe things that don't show up in the box score. Um, could you just talk about sort of the role she plays and, and how she is able to affect the game, even if it doesn't show up? Yeah, I think people kind of low-key for kind of forget about her um you know she's been she's a vet in this league she's been in this league for a while and she knows personnel and um she's very smart when she comes to figuring out how to be a disruption on defense and uh even on offense you know for for us she's been uh, very vocal uh, in our huddles and we're talking about certain things and schemes making sure she's very knowledgeable about the details and honestly her defense has been really helpful uh these games you know the little you know maybe taking away denial uh deflections you know come up with big offensive rebounds she's kind of always in the right spots uh for us to execute on both ends of four and she uh, like i said i think her ability to understand the details on you know her person that she's guarding or even on offense helps her a lot um uh, but yeah i mean she's been just consistent for us and she probably doesn't get mentioned uh enough um but yeah she's been helpful for us and like i said she's always in the right spot comes up with a big rebound big block big deflection whatever it is uh right when we need it well thank you ladies appreciate it well, Thanks. Coaching thank you <sighs> all right we're all set with coach quinn uh percy start us out awesome hey hey the coach um you know it seemed as if your physicality and poise told the story of this game just um, how did you guys use uh, both that physicality and like poise uh, to uh, seemingly wear down Indiana? Again, starting on the defensive side of the ball, um, being very attentive to our scout, whether it was Clark, uh, whether it was Kelsey Mitchell. Um, I know Smith got a little bit loose at the beginning, but, um, you know, meeting there, physicality with physicality sustaining it and you know we talked about if we get stops we can run um even in our you know half court offense there are things that we can get if we're very intentional about um you know being aggressive and being physical so again both sides of the ball but I, I will start on the defensive side of the ball and uh just uh from your um on being on the sideline just uh the the did you particularly see anything in that Clark Vivian sort of dust up there? And, uh, and, you know, also the, the same with uh, the Chrissy sides technical, uh, you know, on TV didn't really get a chance to see what led to that, but we did see uh, the Clark Vivian sort of tanglement there. I didn't see it, but what I saw is competitors on the floor playing hard and, um, you know, competing at a high level, you know, Chrissy, you know, supporting her team, just, High level com competition. Awesome. Thank you, Coach. Let's go to Jeff Brown and we'll go to Moz. Jeff, go ahead. Yeah, Coach. So you start the season 0 and 2, but finish the month of May 5 and 3 with four straight wins. How do you kind of evaluate the team's performance over the first month? And um, what did you learn about your team? Um, well, we are a resilient bunch. Um, we started off the season with a very tough schedule, um, knowing that we didn't have a lot of prep time, but we had to get better in games, in film. And I feel like we have a professional locked-in group, very mature, uh, want to be better um, every single day. And uh, that's what you're seeing. We're not there yet, but we're showing signs of um, a lot of growth in a lot of areas. Um, not trying to pay attention to a record at all. Just want to get better every single day. 
Um, in the third quarter over the past two games against Chicago, you were a plus 11. In this one, you're plus 16. What do you like about your team's adjustments after halftime? I like that they're talking and figuring out uh, with each other. It's not just uh, coaches talking to players, it's players talking with each other to, um, you know, the bench talking to the, those who are on the floor and vice versa to see where our adjustments need to be made. And a lot of times I'm coming into the huddle or into the locker room, they've already talked about it um, because they see it. And um, what it is, is there is there is not a panic in our group at all. Um whether it's if we're down, whether it's we're playing well and teams go on runs, there's a, a poise about um, the leadership, whether it's coming from those three, Jewel, Neca, Skyler, or from our uh, senior advisor and Sammy. Uh, there's always a poise about us that kind of gets us on track and just seeing resilience and seeing uh, patience with the growth in this journey. Very late in the game, um, Indiana goes on an 11-0 run uh, while, while you had sat the starters. Um, Jordan, though, she she makes a few good plays. I think she scores twice and also kicks it out to Kiana for a three. Um, what did you kind of see out of Jordan in those final minutes? And then also just her um, growth uh, in her like ability to um, maybe her offense and shooting kind of inside the paint, I feel like has, has been a pretty big improvement from last year. That's what she's worked on in the off season uh, is those things exactly. Uh, being more efficient around the rim. She couldn't use her right shoulder for a long time, so she was working on her left hand. She's been tweaked her her jump shot a little bit, her three point shots. She's been working at a um, tremendous rate. She's very serious about wanting to 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 improve and be a great player in this league. Um, in those moments, I saw aggressiveness. Uh, she knew that she can. Um, attack her matchup and really dominate her matchup um, defensively. She was using her athleticism and her speed to get her hands on balls. And um, that's what she can do for us consistently. Thank you so much, coach. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, let's go to Maz and then we'll go to Christian. Hey coach, you said your team is resilient, professional, locked in. Is it fair to add un unselfish in that? Yeah, 29 assists. Right. <laughs> so a little uh, kind of back that up um yeah the, the unselfishness is you know it, it sh it's showing up in the box score but to me it's not only on the court it's you know what I see in the locker room what I see on the plane what I see after games it's like um the moments that aren't basketball um I think it really impact these moments as well um talk about the accountability partners and, you know, our group trying to accelerate our chemistry. There is some selflessness in that to know that I have to get out of myself and, and be more team oriented um, so that we can accelerate this thing. And so uh, what it is, is not only selflessness, but it's just getting a feel for our system and each other and chemistry building on the court. Um, you know, it's still early, but I think we're finding, um, you know, some spots to, to really be uh, chemistry driven. And what does it say? For, I mean, what does it do for you, a defensive minded coach, when your one your all stars are coming on in our Zoom and saying we want to play great team defense, and it starts with our defense? Just what kind of space does that put you in, and what's the potential there for this team? Yeah, um, it, it's it's great to know that there's buy in there and there is investment there, um, and there is accountability there because we have the pieces that can play defense on the on a on a high level and. When you have new pieces trying to figure out each other, the, the more locked in they can be on that end of the floor to stop other teams, then, you know, there's some grace in what happens on the offensive end. But, you know, you can you can play faster. You, you can play in transition when you're um, able to be solid defensively. Um, I love that, you know, we're, again, we're locked in onto that side of the ball because it's important. It's not, you know, you have to play offense. You have to play defense, and we know offense is – Everybody loves to play offense, but if we can really um, have a dog defensive mentality, it's it helps it helps this early chemistry building stage. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Miles. Christian, and then we'll wrap up with Candace. Christian, go ahead. Hey, Coach, congrats on the win. Um, you know, dealing with so many different variables to start the season, new players coming in, uh, learning a system, all gelling in one. There's so many different times, you know, ebbs and flows of the game kind of knock the team off their rhythm. But, you know, the, with the last five games, that hasn't really been the test of the story. 
we've seen it from all the different uh, different players, Skyler, Neca, Ezzy, Jordan, Mercedes off the bench, really just a team effort in all, almost all of these games. And the second part of my question is, you know, seven of the next nine before these last two games are on the road, you know, with the team flying charter since the New York game, I think on the 21st, isn't that you're seeing, like you said, most important things off the court as far as chemistry building? What are you seeing on the plan and you know, things that you could share with us? Yeah, sorry, what was the first part of your question? Oh, sorry. Um, you know, team contributions over the last couple of games. Um, oh, yeah. Skyler with 21 assists and nine, uh, only seven turnovers in the last, like, four games, I think. Yeah. Um, one thing that I really, like, noticed about the group is – um, the the points of emphasis or the corrective um, the corrections that we may need to make they really lock in on that and they try they don't want to hear my mouth about it um, as Scott was saying <laughs> because it's like you, you they they want to they want to do the right thing and I think that's a lot of what's happening um, the turnovers have been our Achilles heel so that has been a, a great a greater focus um, moving the ball and ball movement as we're learning each other has been also a point of emphasis and they're trying to do it. They're trying to do the right thing. And again, when I talk about this investment, there, there, there's this, there's this buy-in from, you know, our starting group that trickles down to, to our, our other role players. And, and because they know what their roles are, they're able to be superstars in their roles and really hold each other accountable and themselves accountable to, to those roles. So, um, Sadie's being more aggressive. Jordan doing what she does defensively. Sammy continuing to be to be a sniper. These are all things that those players know that they can do at a high level, and you know they're trusting our main guys to to hold them accountable, but also <clears throat> bring them bring them in as well. Um, and on the charter flight, I'm watching film all the time. I don't know what's going on <laughs> in the front of the plane. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, a lot of card games, um, you know, they're sitting with each other. So lots of conversation. Um, you know, again, I'll talk about these accountability partners that we have. We They have to have touch points with them on these road trips, whether it's coffee, dinner, lunch, and learn about each other outside of basketball and bring that back to the group. Um, you just have a, a really cool group of, of women who like to be around each other and understand that it's greater than just hooping. It's about experiencing one another and um, um, enjoying this journey with each other. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Chris. We'll go to Candace to wrap up. Hey, Coach. Um, I just had a quick question for you about Ezzy's performance tonight um, and just her performances to start this season overall. She just continues to uh, have her name land in some pretty amazing lists of folks who have played in WNBA in terms of just the things that she's doing during games, especially with her shot blocking. Um, and I was just curious your thoughts on just how well she's transitioned into working alongside some newer faces in the starting lineup defensively this season and just how great it's been to see her be such a leader defensively this season for this team. Yeah, her number one role is to be a defensive anchor, and uh, she's living in that. And um, I think, you know, early on in the season, she's trying to figure out how to play with NECA. And, and the cool part about it is, like, I know, I know as you may look at Sky and Neca as these big superstars who maybe she grew up watching or whatever it is, but they look at her in the same light. And I love that. That that resonates with me because it shows like, you know, who she is and how humble she is, but also how how you know good of a basketball player she is as well. Um, she is really, really cleans up a lot of stuff defensively for us and um, the blocks, but also this year she's more confident in her her scheme calling, and I hear her being vocal, and that's one of the things we we've been talking about for the past like couple of seasons is like now that you know uh, and are comfortable defensively, now you have to be vocal back there, and I see the growth in that aspect. But also, you know, just like in Chicago, she, her she's capable of giving us some offensive firepower too, pushing the ball up the floor. Um, finding players and finishing efficiently around the rim. So it's not just defensively for us. That's where it starts, but the offense really helps us as well. All right. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. I just had a really quick follow-up. Um, I was just curious, NECA, actually, just a moment ago, she referred to Ezzy as the marshal on defense for the team. Would you agree with that? Yeah, and whatever, all synonyms, <laughs> Mar <laughs> Marshall, Anchor, I don't know if that's a synonym, but yes, uh, everything that encompasses whatever. And then that goes to Stanford, so <laughs> I trust that, that that's what, the, that's what uh, Ezzy embodies. <laughs> all right, thanks, Coach. Yeah, we'll see you right back in Seattle.